In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about GPUs and stable diffusion. This is an issue that a lot of people who are new to the stable diffusion community um, seem to experience, since a lot of them you know, don't necessarily come from a tech background and GPUs are like quite a technical thing. Uh, as you can see by that graph, you know, that looks pretty technical. Luckily though, once you have an understanding of what a GPU is and what the best ways to access them are, the decisions you have to make are actually not that difficult. And at the end of the day, as long as you're not doing anything too crazy, the expense won't be too much. So here's what we're gonna do in this video. Firstly, we're gonna talk about what a GPU is and why it's important for running stable diffusion. After that, we're gonna just cover the general considerations you have to take into account when deciding what kind of GPU to, to get a hold of. And finally, at the end, um, using my wealth of experience as like an AI practitioner, um, I'm gonna give you some concrete recommendations on exactly the products that you should probably, uh, you should, you should get. Before I go any further, I want to quickly mention that this video was prompted mainly by Peepa and another member from the Discord called Ceaseless Surviving. Um, together the three of us created this guide. We're calling it the No Man's Guide to GPUs and basically all the content that is going to be covered in this video is already here inside this document. So if you're like more of a reedy person and less of a listeny person then just go click on the link it's in the description and then just give yourself a read basically once you finish it you'll know exactly how to find the gpu that's best for you but if you're more of a listeny guy let's get into it so like we've all seen the gpu it's one of those boys um but why is it important for running stable diffusion well basically your computer already has a processing unit called the cpu or central processing unit um and a GPU is just a fancy different version of a CPU that's really good at running specialized computations. And it just happens that those specialized computations are really important for running stable diffusion quickly. So a GPU is just a specialized processor that you sort of need to run stable diffusion. You don't actually need it though. You can run stable diffusion on a CPU, but it does run very, very slowly. For instance, this Reddit user uh, ended up managing to get Stable Diffusion running on a CPU and it ended up taking him 5 minutes and 30 seconds to generate 20 steps. Uh, and so that's, that's actually pretty quick. Usually you'd want to do about 30 steps to generate an image. Um, but that's sort of the minimum. And so that's sort of what you're looking at. 5 minutes per image on a CPU. So basically, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Things are improving, obviously, and I'm sure that there's a way to get it running faster than this on a CPU, especially if you have like a big chunky CPU. But essentially, that's why you need a GPU. Because if you try to run stable diffusion on the CPU, you will have you'll have a bad time. Okay, so that's the first one out of the way. Now, how do you decide what GPU to get? Okay, well, basically, I've just made this flowchart, and I think I think it pretty much covers everything you need to consider. So we've arrived at this spot where we're like, yep, I want to run stable diffusion on a GPU. So now there are a few decisions we have to make. And the first sort of important one is around what kind of GPU we want. In particular, we want to decide which manufacturer to go to, what series of GPU to get, and how much RAM to get on that GPU. There are basically two GPU manufacturers. There's Nvidia and there's AMD. And unfortunately, it turns out that AMD is just not very good for running stable diffusion at this stage. They're making progress, but as of October 2022, you want something from NVIDIA. Again, there's more on this in the guide, but take it from me, just go with NVIDIA, it will save you so much headache. Okay, so we've decided that we want an NVIDIA GPU. The next question is, what series of GPU do we want? And I sort of touched on this in an earlier video about how to install Xformance, which if you're a bit more technical, you definitely do want to install Xformance because Xformance is really good. But basically, NVIDIA has like come out with multiple kinds of GPUs over the years, and some of them are really old now. And you just want to make sure that you're buying a GPU from one of the newer series, otherwise you might have some difficulties. Basically, you know, long story short, what you want is something from the Pascal, Turing or Ampere series. Basically, that's one of these guys. If you're buying a consumer grade GPU, that'll be the 10XX, 20XX or 30XX GPUs. There are some larger server GPUs as well though. So series or, or micro architectures as they're sometimes called can get a little bit complicated. 
but you basically just want a newer GPU made by NVIDIA, something released in 2016 or later. And as long as you have that, then you're okay. The final question to ask is how much RAM do I need? So RAM stands for random access memory, and it basically refers to how many things the GPU can do at once. Um, another way of thinking about it is how big of a model can I hold in my GPU at a singular time? So me, Ceaseless Vibing, and Peeper went ahead, did a lot of research, and we compiled this nice table, which dictates how much GPU RAM you need for different applications of stable diffusion. So, for instance, if you're just having a poke around, just doing normal text to image stuff, all you need is four gigabytes of RAM. When things get a bit more complex, like you want to retrain with Dream Boot or Textual Inversion, there's a, there's a bit more going on, and as a consequence you need a bit more RAM. But basically, we found, and this was kind of surprising to me, that there are no common use cases for stable diffusion that take more than 8 gigabytes of RAM. Which is like, really good news, because most GPUs have 8 gigabytes of RAM, uh, unless they're like a laptop GPU. A lot of them have like way more. So that's both interesting and good news, that all you really need to run Stable Diffusion is 8 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, great. So now we know what manufacturer NVIDIA, we know what series, uh, one of the recent ones from 2016 onwards, and we know how much RAM, 8 gigabytes. Or, you know, 4 gigabytes is also fine if we just want to play around, but probably you want 8 gigabytes. Okay, now comes the big question. Do you rent a GPU or do you buy a GPU? So before we go into which one you should do, let's talk about how these work. Buying a GPU is the one that kind of makes the most sense. This is like you go into a store, you purchase a GPU, and then you work out how to stick it into your computer somehow, like this guy is doing. And once it's installed and all the right software is there and it's working in your computer, then that GPU will be in your computer and it'll be available for your use. So that's, that's buying. Buying straightforward. But how does renting work? How do you like rent someone else's PC? How do you like rent a GPU? Well, basically out there on the internet, there are companies like RunPod, which just maintain racks and racks and racks of really fast, really effective, like cutting edge computers. And for a small fee, you can connect your computer to that computer. And then your computer can send requests of any nature to that really fast, really powerful computer. And those requests will be fulfilled and the responses will be sent back to you. To your PC. So even if you have a PC that doesn't have a GPU, maybe it's like 10 years old and filled with rats, that's fine. You can just connect to the PC run by RunPod, which is not full of rats, and it's got like the latest GPU, it's got the latest everything, and you can just ask it to do things on your behalf. Okay, so now we've reached this like fork, right? Do I rent or do I buy? This is sort of the most hard decision to make. There are sort of trade-offs on either side, but in general, I think renting is better, but we'll get to that. So what are the benefits of buying? Well, there are a few. Firstly, you have more control over your setup. If you're trying to do something really cutting edge and innovative, you'll want to have a GPU sitting right there that you can experiment on and install strange things on without any obstruction. So that's one reason to, to buy is to make some really custom stuff. It's slightly faster generating since you don't have to communicate through the internet. The GPU is like right there in front of you. And the most important benefit of buying a GPU is that you only have to set up everything once. If you're renting, like say, you know, with a service like RunPod, every time you wake up in the morning and you want to run some more stable diffusion, you have to connect to the RunPod PC. And then you have to install a bunch of packages on the RunPod PC and install the model on the RunPod PC. Every time you disconnect, at the end of the day, when your session's finished, RunPod will go ahead and clear that PC of all information. Of course, sometimes there are services which already have stable diffusion, like dedicated instances, but even those will take a little while to set up. The main benefit, in my opinion, of buying is that you just need to set up once, and then every time you want to do anything else, even if it's a really complicated setup you have, you just need to turn on your computer, and then you're ready to go. Another benefit is that you're not reliant on the internet, although like probably Probably everyone has pretty good internet connection at this stage, I think. And lastly, there's like this very nice infrastructure of open source programs that make it easy for you to run stable diffusion locally. Okay, but what are the benefits of renting? Well, one big benefit of renting is that 
It's way cheaper than buying, unless you're like a really dedicated Stable Diffusion user who's going to be using Stable Diffusion constantly. So to buy NVIDIA RTX 260, which has 6 gigabytes of RAM, it's, this is a pretty old GPU at this point, but it'll, it'll do the job, costs about $400. Now if you were to go on RunPod and rent an RTX 370, which is obviously a, a lot newer and a lot faster, that costs $2 per hour. So that's 1,945 hours of generation that you'd have to do on RunPod before you broke even. I'm like a, a fairly active user, I would say, of Stable Diffusion, but I probably generate about maybe four to six hours a week. I actually spend like generating. So like price-wise, there's kind of no comparison. Renting is much, much cheaper. And the other nice thing about renting is you're not tying yourself to like a single GPU, right? If, if there's a huge innovation next year and, and you know, there's something much faster comes out, then you can just go ahead and rent that or you can buy that at that stage, rather than sort of being stuck to this investment you just made. The other benefit is that physically installing a GPU is like tiresome, laborious work, and getting the software set up perfectly and getting CUDA installed, all of that can go wrong and it's quite annoying. Uh, and this is in my opinion as someone who like professionally did that for a long time. So it's, it's just not fun. Uh, whereas with rental services, often the GPU software like CUDA comes installed already. So all you have to do is you, you connect to the PC and the PC already has a GPU installed, it already has everything set up. You still have to install Stable Diffusion and any sort of related packages you want to use with Stable Diffusion, but the basic GPU infrastructure will be there for you. And there are even some services out there which allow you to rent like a Stable Diffusion preset PC which means that Stable Diffusion is actually already installed on the PC and all the libraries required to run it are installed. So all you have to do is sort of turn it on and, and start generating. Lastly, when you're renting, you have like this flexibility of being able to access really big GPUs for like a little bit. So let's say you have one core cool project you have in mind that requires 64 gigabytes of RAM. You're not gonna to wanna to buy that, but you could rent it over maybe two weekends, pay like $170 for that privilege and then you you can use that to like train a model really fast or I don't know what crazy thing you might want to do but the point is online renting gives you a lot of flexibility okay so renting or buying you know kind of a tricky decision to make the really big benefit in my opinion of buying is that you can just start generating really quickly it takes takes me like a minute to spin up stable diffusion when I want it and then I can immediately start cranking out images and that's really good for me because that's sort of the workflow I have, is I'll just think, oh, I want this image, and I don't want to have to spend 10 minutes setting up an online service before I can get generating. On the other hand, renting is way cheaper and it gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, and it has this other really nice benefit of, at any time, you can decide to buy. <laughs> you know, you can do renting for a bit and sort of work out how everything is and be like, oh, I like this, I don't like this. And, you know, when you're ready to commit, you can then go ahead and buy. And you sort of can't go the other way because you've already paid the money when you did the purchase. If you have chosen to rent, the next thing you have to do is choose a service to use. There are a lot of services, a lot of research put into this document. You can see sort of basically all the options are right here. Uh, my personal favorite is to use Google Colab. Unfortunately, you do have to know a little bit about Python and maybe a little bit about bash scripting to be able to use it properly and, and sort of debug all the issues. But if you do happen to have that knowledge already, Colab is really easy to use and it has the added benefit of being like like free <laughs> google, google literally just gives you access to their gpus on the servers they maintain for free for like you know for a few hours as long as you don't abuse their service too much uh which i think is really like that's just so cool so talking about price google colab that's, that's zero. <laughs> zero dollars for Google Colab. And there are also lots of different Colab notebooks that you can access to do lots of fancy things like Dream Booth and animation and that kind of stuff. So you can get pretty far with Google Colab. Uh, there's another free notebook option, which is Kaggle. So that's, that's also worth looking into. One last thing about renting, and this is sort of not super intuitive, but you can rent a, a GPU and also use things like Photoshop plugins or like Krita plugins. Because you just open Photoshop on your computer 
and then you hit generate inside your Photoshop and then a message will go to the, the PC online uh, out in RunPod or whatever to generate your images and then those images will be sent back to your Photoshop. So you don't need a local GPU to do fancy things. In fact, basically anything, as long as it's not too cutting edge, that you can be done locally can also be done through a rented GPU. Okay, but let's say you have decided to buy, now you have to work out which GPU to choose when buying. This is sort of a big decision, so make sure that you get an NVIDIA GPU, make sure it's from the right series. And we also went through the RAM and established that eight gigabytes of RAM is kind of all you need. Um, but there is something else when you're using a GPU locally, which is firstly, you want to future-proof yourself a little bit. Maybe some cool development will come out, which requires 12 gigabytes of GPU, and you'll be like, ah, damn, I've just got eight. And it'll be really frustrating because you're sort of stuck with it. Um, and the other thing about running GPUs locally is that it's often nice to be able to generate and also do other stuff as well on your computer at the same time. And if you just have eight gigabytes of GPU and all eight are being used up outpainting, then your computer is going to get really slow and you might have to close everything else as well while the outpainting is happening. Based on all that, what I would recommend is getting a 16 gigabyte GPU or maybe 12, but I would recommend 16 gigabytes and that will probably keep you safe for the next two to three years. Personally, I'm still using an old RTX 270 and apparently that was released in July of 2019. So that's like, what? That's like three and a half years old at this stage and it still, it still works really well. Which brings us to my personal recommendations. If you're someone who's pretty new to Stable Diffusion, what I would recommend is just using Google Colab for now. You might have to spend maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours, trying to understand how Python works exactly. But there are good tutorials on how to use Colab, and it won't take you more than that amount of time to sort of be able to use Colab properly. Colab gives you a lot of flexibility. Almost anything that can be done in Stable Diffusion can be done in Colab. And it also gives you a lot of raw power because you get access to these big Google GPUs that are like, you know, very chunky. For the first three or four days, all I did was use Colab and that gave me enough of an idea of how good Stable Diffusion was and what I could do with it. Now, if you are getting serious and you find you're generating Stable Diffusion like once a day, you don't want to go through that 10 minute setup process and uh, you feel like you have the technical chops to actually install a GPU locally, my recommendation is the GeForce RTX 360. Now, I promise, I promise I'm not sponsored by anyone, but the price tag is $579 which is like really cheap. And for that, you get 12 gigabytes of RAM. And like those more technically savvy might be like, oh, well, Luca, it's so much slower than the 370. You're losing so much speed. But at the end of the day, for stable diffusion and actually running it and using it in production, speed doesn't actually matter that much. Like, you know that you're gonna generate, it's gonna take some time, you're gonna have to come back again. And whether it takes like 90 seconds or two minutes doesn't really affect your workflow that much. So on that basis, I reckon that the, the RTX 360 is definitely the way to go. The 12 gigabytes of RAM gives you like a reasonable amount of future proofing. And at the moment it means that you can generate on the one hand, while at the same time, I don't know, like recording a video or having Photoshop open or something like that. Okay, and uh, that just about wraps it up, hey. Um, again, the guide, really helpful. Huge thanks to Ceaseless Vibing and Peepa. The guide was definitely a joint effort and it's definitely worth checking out. There's a lot of detail in there. There's a lot of links that are useful. If you have any questions, as always, YouTube comments, Discord comments, bloody 